Magnus Carlsen and Wesley So play a crazy London system in the Speed Chess Championship. This really is a, a fun game. You know, a London system is what they call a system opening, like a King's Indian attack or a college system, where White wants to get their pieces on the all of these predetermined squares and then play from that position game after game after game and learn the nuances inside and out. But every once in a while, White loses control of the position, and the position begin, becomes very unorthodox and wild. And that's what happens in this game between these two chess giants. Let's begin. Magnus has White. Wesley So has Black. D4 is played. Knight to F6 and Bishop to F4. Uh, you can begin with Knight to F3. With Bishop to F4, you might later want to play Knight to C3, uh, introducing a Jobaba London or even uh, supporting an E4 push. And depending on what black plays, uh, in th this case, the normal response from black is either d5, g6, or c5. However, here, Wesley So plays the move knight to h5, which in my database is the eighth most commonly played move. It's very rare. And we see in the next uh, few moves, Wesley So is doing everything in his power to catch that bishop, to get the two bishop uh, advantage. And Magnus is doing everything he can to sort of wiggle out of it, slither away, and keep that bishop protected. Let's see who wins that battle. The bishop is attacked. Carlson goes back to d2. The knight goes to f6. He brings it right back. Um, d2 is not a good square for that bishop, and Wesley so plays knight to h5. Having the black pieces against Carlson, he was probably satisfied with the draw, but Magnus was not. So he did not play back to d2, but instead went to g5, similar to where the bishop ends up in a Trompovsky, pinning the e-pawn against the queen and uh, limiting Black's kingside development a bit. But as we said, Wesley So really wants that bishop. So he plays h6, bishop h4, g5. And uh, Wesley So would love for Carlson to just play the bishop to g3, the knight takes it, bishop pair, you know, without any sweat. Uh, but Magnus will not make it that easy. He does not retreat the bishop. He instead plays e3, counterattacking the knight at h5. So if Wesley So wants to grab the bishop pair, he can only do it by wrecking his kingside pawn structure. He doesn't want to do that. So he plays the knight back to g7, then bishop to g3. But his pursuit of this bishop has not ended. He plays the knight to f5, again, threatening to grab the bishop pair. Can Magnus get out of the, these threats and save his valuable dark squared bishop? Bishop to e5 immediately goes after the rook at h8. He does not want to play f6 because then queen to h5 would be checkmate. Uh, he doesn't want to play the bishop to g7, because then you don't get the bishop pair. The bishops get traded off, and both sides would only have one bishop. So he plays the rook to g8. Uh, he gives up kingside castling, but these pawns can advance, supported by the rook, so there is some counterplay there. But now Magnus plays h3, creating that square that's so commonly uh, created in the London system for his bishop to tuck back, on h2, safe and sound. And after d6, that's exactly what Magnus does, protecting that bishop at h2. So already, this has become a very unorthodox London system, but there's some really cool tactics left uh, to be played in this game. Wesley So plays the knight to c6, supporting that e5 push. Magnus plays knight to f3, obviously the most natural move on the board, stopping the e5 push. h5. So a Wesley So says, I've got the rook at g8, the knight at f5, I might as well advance my kingside pawns. Uh, he does have to worry about development, though. Uh, pawn moves instead of piece moves are always tricky. And uh, Magnus decides to play d5, immediately thrusting his pawn in the center of the board. The knight can move to b4 in response to this, but after c3, knight to a6, e4, gaining more space, uh, Magnus will be doing very well in this position. Um, and if he counterattacks with g4, then pawn takes, pawn takes, then he takes the knight, and then the queen actually uh, defends the c6, uh, c6 pawn. So that would be uh, bad for black. So what Wesley so does instead, he retreats the knight back to its original square on b8. And we see, I mean, this is a very strange arrangement of pieces. To have all of these pieces still on the back rank, the only thing developed is the rook at g8, the knight at f5, and then these two pawns on g5 and, and h5. Very unusual. Magnus, playing more orthodox, just plays e4, hitting the knight at f5, gaining space and a tempo. The knight comes back to h6. Uh, and we can just see already black's pieces are beginning to look poorly placed. 
knight to c3, Magnus develops another piece, and now e5. Um, Wesley so would love for this pawn to stay on e5. <laughs> it limits the scope of the f3 knight and makes the bishop at h2 bite on granite, so there's no way Magnus is going to let that stay there, so he captures that en passant. Now bishop takes e6 and knight to d4. He's putting pressure on the bishop at e6. Magnus is also threatening to take the pawn on h5, so there's a dual threat. Magnus is now threatening to grab the bishop pair or grab a pawn. Wesley so uh, can't let the pawn be lost, so he plays g4. Now, Magnus does not go right for the bishop here. Um, he actually places his own bishop, the one on f4, the one on h2, excuse me, on f4, to take on g4. Knight takes g4. White's better here, but uh, it's not as good as in the game. So bishop to f4, putting pressure on this h6 knight. Um, he can't win it yet. I mean, it's defended, but he's applying pressure, trying to get that black position to break. Queen to f6, attacks the bishop on f4 and defends the knight at h6. Queen to d2, defends the bishop, adds another attacker to the knight. A pawn takes, pawn takes, opening up the g file. And now knight to d7, that knight that had come to c6 and been pushed back to b8 is now the last minor piece to develop allowing black to castle long uh, in this position. Now, computers actually like to move knight d to b5 for white, uh, attacking that c7 pawn, threatening a fork. Um, but here, Magnus goes ahead and just castles long himself, and Wesley so responds in the same way, castling long. So, uh, with all that strangeness, has uh, Magnus give, lost the advantage that he, he seemed to have? Uh, the answer is no. And we're going to see why right now. It turns out Wesley So's king, although it is castled, is not safe at all. Knight C to B5. Now, I want you to notice something. Things on each side of the board. Black's king is on C8, and this knight is on H6. They're on opposite sides. But I want you to watch the way Magnus uses pressure on one, that knight all the way over on H6, to apply pressure on the other side of the board to the king. You see these building blocks of pressure. He, he really does this. It just, just applies pressure all over the board until the position sort of breaks for his opponent. Um, king to b8 would be a mistake. Uh, bishop to e3, and white's attack is, is vicious here. Both knights, bishop, queen, just all coming in quickly, and I don't think black would have any chance of surviving that attack. So what Wesley so does is he plays a6. The idea is simple to just kick the knight back to c3, take away the b5 square, and try to consolidate on the queen side to protect his king. Um, but Magnus doesn't do that. He doesn't retreat the knight. He plays the knight to a7, which at first looks a little tricky. I mean, it's with check, so the king has to play uh, to b8. And now it looks like the knight is trapped, and anywhere it goes, it will be captured. And while that is true, it doesn't really matter, because the knight retreats to c6. And this forks the king and the rook. And after pawn takes knight, as was played in the game, knight takes c6, the other knight comes in and now forks the king and the rook. So normally you would say, well, rook and a pawn for two knights is about equal material. Magnus would have given up two well-developed pieces. Is this really a smart exchange? Well, it is. In fact, it's crushing. Uh, what Wesley So would love to do here is play king to c8 so that after knight takes rook, he can retake with his king. But if he does that, bishop to a6 is checkmate. He's lost, so he cannot play the king to c8. He has to play the king to b7. And now knight takes rook. And look at the pressure we talked about of this knight on h6. It's attacked twice by the queen and bishop and defended twice by black's queen and bishop. But look at this knight on d8, currently delivering check. When Wesley so captures it, now with his queen, the knight on h6 is hanging. The entire position was tied together. And after bishop takes h6, down an entire piece, Wesley so resigned this game of the Speed Chess Championship, and Magnus Carlsen did win their match. I hope you enjoyed this crazy London system game. See you again soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.